Welcome to Jack's Tech Corner, or if you're new to the show, welcome aboard. Uh, we're glad to have you here at Jack's Tech Corner. I'm your host, Jack, and this is yet another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. Now, these tutorials have been doing very, very well, um, and I'm glad everybody's actually learning along with me. So, I wanted to uh, take some time uh, in this particular video and we're going to call this Fun Photo Layouts. Now it's just a nice way that you can take some of your pictures and display them a little differently than most people display their pictures. Now it's going to work out, uh, you can use basically any background, but I thought I would play around a little bit with uh, a picture here that I found from Times Square. Now, folks, you don't have to go to Times Square. Uh, maybe you've never been there. You know, possibly you live overseas. A lot of people overseas are watching these videos. So, just go to Google Images and search around. You can find all these pictures. Just download it, and then you can use that image. Um, you know, you're really not marketing it or selling it. You're just using it for your own private use. So, we have an image here of Times Square. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these signs up here. And we're going to change those signs and put our own pictures up. Now, this actually, this tutorial actually came from an idea, I guess, of somebody emailing me recently. And I do uh, thank you, and I can't remember your name. Um, and asked me about putting pictures on little kids' blocks. It would be the same way. You could do this the same way as what I'm going to show you how to do these signs. So let's go ahead and get started right away and uh, see how this is going to work out for us. First thing I can tell you to do is if you're going to change a sign, if you look at them here, they're either landscape or portrait mode. We're going to go ahead first and we're going to change a sign. We're going to change this one uh, with a, uh, a portrait mode. So we're going to grab one of our pictures here. I have them all laid up in tabs up here across the top. So if we go back across, we're just going to grab this picture. So all we do is go to select all. We're going to go to edit and copy. Now what we're going to do at that point is we're going to open up our last tab. That's where I happen to have the picture at or the background that I'm using to put these pictures on. Then we'll go up to edit and we're going to go down to paste. And what normally happens is the picture is going to be larger than where you're placing the picture. So make sure when you're actually changing the size of these, you click on the pointer up here for the move tool we're gonna actually start changing the size of this but make sure you do so by grabbing the top left or top right whatever you're more comfortable with and pulling down towards the middle the reason that's going to be happening is you don't want to change the perspective of the picture right we don't want to do this so we make her shorter and a little fatter we don't want to do that I'll grab from the top work your way across top work your way across okay once we get this picture just about ready to fit in there we can start playing around with the size a little bit I think I still actually shrunk her down just a little bit too much and it's going to be distorted at this point somewhat because of the main fact that we're trying to fit it into this particular uh, hole right here. Once you get it to sit in there correctly, what I want you to do is go up under Image, Transform, and Distort. Now you can grab these edges and you can see we can actually distort the picture to fit inside of the actual frame or the sign. Uh, whatever you're putting this on. Sign, block, frame, car, uh, whatever your background happens to be. But you want to match up the distortion as best as possible to make it look more realistic. Click on here, and there you go. You dropped it in, we have the right angle, it looks really good. Now, we're going to go, we're going to drop a picture up here, uh, where it says uh, Jersey Boys. And now we have to have a picture um, in actual landscape mode, instead of portrait mode. So we'll cross our pictures here. We'll grab this one. Again, we're going to select all, edit, 
copy. That, click on the last one. Edit. We're going to paste. And as you see also what's happening here is when we're doing these, we're actually creating new layers. So you can see the new layers being created over here on the right. Go here, we're just going to pull this one down. Pull it up. We're just shrinking it down so it's going to fit. Shrink it down a little bit more so we can get it in here. I like to start at the top corner and then I kind of work my way around. I do my uh, my uh, transformations here, transforming when I'm distorting my pictures. Then I can distort it. I can pull it up in here. Pull it down here. And we're going to pull it back here a little bit. Let me pull this side up a little bit. Just like I say, just to match it in. And we'll click on there. There you go. Click on the background layer. But always make sure you click the checkbox or hit the enter key, whichever makes you more comfortable. And there we have it. We have another sign uh, completely done. And when you're done, this is going to be a really nice picture for you to actually frame. Now what I was working on here is getting this uh, little turn made here. So this is a little bit more difficult. It's more of an illusion. Uh, I'm trying to do this the best I can. Let me see. I had a great picture for it. Here we go. Uh, again, we're going to just uh, select all. I'll copy this picture. And we're going to put that back over here now. Again, edit. I have had a few people, very few people, even say, Jack, you go very fast. I can't follow along. Slow down. Um, so let's go back one more time here. Uh, we're going to go here. Again, what we did was to get this picture, okay, we're going to go to select all to select the whole picture, edit, and we're going to go to copy. Or you can use the shortcut key. On the Mac, it's the command C, and on the PC, it's the control C. You can copy that that way. Go back to your background picture, whatever you're using. Again, you can go edit, you can go paste. Or it's a Command V on the Mac, or Control V on the PC. If you get these shortcuts down, sometimes it's a little easier to work on your pictures. And we're just going to simply drag this one down, make it a little smaller. Once we get up in here, to fit nice, right? We'll get it in here so it fits a little nicer. Okay. Now we'll start with our distorting. So image, transform, distort. And we are going to distort this a little bit. What we're going to do this time is go a little bit higher. Uh, because we want to go above the little bend right there. Okay, so get a little bit higher. And we're going to pull this down. Pull this one over. Again, trying to uh, place it in there just correctly. Keeping the edges as straight as possible, right? Just like so. We'll click OK. The picture is now sitting there. Now what I like to do is to blow this up a little bit so I can see what's going on. And right up here, what we're going to do is <clears throat> use the eraser tool and just start erasing some of this here. And the reason is you're trying to get right to that white right there. Because the top of the picture is straight, so we're actually taking the top of the picture and we're actually changing a little bit. Uh, so we have that little cut right here. Just like so. And you, Now you're going to be a little bit more uh, careful than what I was up around the top here. I'm just taking this off. Go back to view. Fit on screen. And now with that taken off, you can see we actually have that little cut here where it makes the picture turn a little bit. 
just enough to give us that illusion that that picture is actually bending around that corner. So go ahead with the rest of your pictures and get all these signs changed. Uh, once you get them all done, save it as a JPEG. Then go out and have that developed off for you. Go have it printed. Uh, probably 11 by 14 would look really nice. Uh, hang that on your wall. It makes a really great conversation piece. Or, you know, another nice thing to do about with these uh, type of pictures, if you're doing a photo book, use this for the cover. Uh, it makes it really nice also for a cover. So folks, if you've enjoyed this video tutorial, please stop by my website, jackstechcorner.com, and I have a lot more video tutorials for you. On the three, uh, the three volume set there for $40, there's 112 great element videos for you to pick up, and you can learn more. Um, on the single discs, uh, it averages about 30 videos per disc, so... There you have it. There's also a Mac volume. If you want to learn a little bit more about iPhoto and integrating that with your Photoshop elements, that'll teach you all those little tips and tricks. Um, don't forget, you can also donate. A lot of people just like to donate to the show to help keep the website going and to help keep the software coming in uh, for needed equipment such as our recording software, uh, microphones, and what have you, whatever we may need here. So thank you very, very much for watching. Uh, at, at the very least, please subscribe to the show. We're trying to make 5,000 subscribers. Uh, we're at 4,000 something right now. So let's keep pushing forward and get that 5,000 in there. So until next time, as always, keep those shutters clicking and keep the editors editing. And you two will catch on and be better at Photoshop Elements. I'll see you back here next time on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.